dum dum dum. Welcome to the first of Arc Inquisitors analysis. Up front, whoever accept President Trump's Supreme Court nomination will be an inherently corrupt, amoral person bent on applying their personal worldview of morality upon a society, whether that society in general approves of it or not, and finds that the, how can I say, ends justifies the means, no matter what, in terms of the enforcement of what is considered a universal morality upon the general population. That is the analysis. Now I will explain. I originally made this video before anybody was nominated and I wanted to, to release it then, but now that, uh, who is it, Amy Comey Barrett has been nominated, it's inherently about her, but it wasn't originally. It was just about whoever would be nominated. And this is what I've told people uh, for the last week. Why? Because of the circumstance of the nomination already paints a portrait of the type of person who would accept the nomination under these circumstances. In other words, if we have a square-shaped hole then we know that a square-shaped peg will be the appropriate fit for that hole. We have the hole, the empty nomination, and the circumstances around how that nomination came about, I mean, how the vacancy came about, and also, again, yeah, how the nomination came about. Now we have to ask, what personality type would fit into this situation. And that's why I don't need to know anything about the person themselves. I already know that anybody who would accept this situation, these circumstances, uh, and, and accept a nomination under these circumstances already has to have key parts of their personality set. So, um, that's where this analysis will come from. Now, I will explain why. First and foremost, whether you want to believe it or not, Ruth Bader Ginsburg's dying wish was that her vacancy not be filled until after the election. Now, people have said, yeah, well, maybe that's just BS and she didn't make that. Even if she didn't actually say those words, we know for a long time, that's what she wanted. Uh, two, um, the hypocrisy factor. Anybody who, any judge who can look at Republican senators set out a um, standard of we will not vote to confirm anybody in an election year, much less during an active election, and then four years later sits down and accepts the nomination from hypocrites is an inherently immoral person. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, to accept something from such people already makes, uh, is not just guilt by association, it, it, it's, it means you accept their hypocrisy. And any judge who accepts hypocrisy as an acceptable standard of behavior already tells me how the the legal thinking of this person is and it's something that 
would be <laughs> very troubling. I mean, any judge who thinks hypocrisy is okay probably shouldn't be a judge, much less a Supreme Court justice. Anybody who is replacing somebody uh, and, and simply asking, simply asking that they wait three months for a nomination, not even three months, and says, nope, I'm not going to do that either, speaks even more towards that. So you then have to ask, now, you can be one-dimensional about this and just say, oh, such a person is evil and corrupt. No, that is absurd. Such a person has convictions which are so strong, inflexible, immutable, and overrides all other considerations means that they would accept such a nomination under any circumstances. And those circumstances must be to push forward an agenda. An agenda that they believe must be enforced above all other things. Now, I don't need to know what that agenda is. I just know that somebody looking at that situation and accepting that opportunity, regardless of how they get it, regardless of how tarnished the nomination is, they will take it because it's an opportunity to push forward. An agenda tells me that this is a closed-minded, fanatical individual who may make flowery, um, elaborate, legal arguments, but underneath it all, simply has one core set of beliefs and everything else is just an elaborate play of words to make those core beliefs sound like they're reasonable under any situation, no matter how unreasonable. And the first example of this is the nomination itself. Look at how unreasonable the nomination is. And if the nomination is that unreasonable, then you know how unreasonable they will be about anything else. Again, I don't know what her political uh, agenda would be. I just know the mindset that she has around pushing that agenda. She will not be objective. She will be an absolute crusader activist justice. And I use that word in the loosest possible sense. There will be no blindfold on justice in this situation. Once her political uh, and, and moral, moralistic mentality is known, there will be no deviation from it in any case that is put before her, period. That is absurd. Now, some people then, as a caveat, and this is not my recommendation, but simply says, well, how would you respond to that? Well, first of all, as a Democrat, not me as a Democrat, but Democrats, uh, you, nothing. Why? Because Democrats are spineless, mealy-mouthed, useless individuals, politically speaking. Um, but what I would do is the moment the Democrats, assuming they get a majority in the House, uh, in the Senate, and uh, in the presidency, um, I would immediately vote to reduce the court <laughs> by three justices, okay? Whoop, so we go from nine uh, down to six, like it was a hundred so years ago. No problem. Those three nominations, out the door. Bye-bye. Leave it sit that way for, I don't know, a month, a two, three, however long you need to. And then, oh, second vote. Let's increase it back up to nine again. Okay, no problem. Let's vote. Yes, 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 yes. Good. Now it goes from six back to nine. Oh, look, we have three vacancies. Need to fill them. There you go. Bye-bye, Trump employee, uh, appointees. 
out the door. That's 100% in the power of the Congress. Will Democrats have the labia to do this? Absolutely not. But that would be the answer I would do if I, <laughs> if we live in a world where the most committed wins, that's what I would do. And that is our Inquisitor's analysis. Bye. I hope you liked it. Was it fun? Was it shocking enough for you? Good. Bye.